Trust your intuition. It's there for a reason. The gut feeling is telling you what to do in the first two seconds. Anything after that is a self-doubt. So when you're asking yourself, should you do this, should you do that? And you're asking everyone else and you're going like shopping for the answers. It's like, you know, when people um, have got a deck of cards, the spiritual cards, and they're pulling out the card until they don't get the one what they want. It clearly says pull one card out or pull three cards out, but you're pulling until you don't actually have got the card what you want. You're not trusting the universe. You're not trusting that sometimes things are not to be pushed and forced. Sit in a stillness. Allow the right or the highest vibration to come to you. Anything of lower vibration. Disregard. Let it go. Why are you holding on to it just that you can say that you have got this many friends or followers or just that you have got so many things? Isn't it better to have one valuable friend and one valuable thing than having 300 of non-valuable, non-trusting? If you're not sure should you buy these shoes, ask for the signs and trust when they do come in. Example. Should you, could you? Is a question where you're putting that energy into outside validation and you are losing your power in that moment. To keep your power, you all have to be in your heart. You have to trust the intuition. You have to clear your intuition portal instead of yourself and trust them when it comes in. And not say, oh, I'll, I'll make it work. I'll make it work. I will get this. It, it, it will it'll be fine. And if you don't have got the answers, sit in stillness, they will come. And if they're not coming, that's possibly the right answer too. As a human beings, we can't sit still. Or can we sit still if we learn to sit still? And as I talked about it in Conscious Parenting, a free mastermind class, what did my dad taught me when we went hunting when I was young? And sitting in a hunting lodge like which was like build up stuff and you're sitting between the trees and in the morning early mornings sun is rising the fog is lifting and i was sitting there with my dad and he taught me how to watch how to observe look at the nature look at how it's waking up look at what a blessing it is in front of you and as a kid I couldn't sit still, I wanted to do things, it was, it was boring to sit there. But I learned to enjoy it, I learned what it is and how to sit in stillness. Therefore, did I learn how to be patient? Yeah. So to become more aware is a learning process, especially if you didn't Learn some of those things when you were younger. But if you're a parent right now, you can make a difference. You can teach the children and maybe your parents didn't know this. So there is no need to hold a grudge and the resentment regarding your parents either. They've done maybe the best what they knew to their knowledge into their capacity, what they were open for. We are here to learn to absorb, evolve and embody and transform. How much each one of us does it, it's up to us. There is no need to compare or to judge or criticize others. There's only to do the work on you. And we have a choice to have our boundaries and be assertive 
do have routines, so morning routines, evening routines, and self-care. Push ourselves to do more, to get up in the morning when we don't feel like getting up. I want to stay in the bed a little bit longer. But then we are resenting that we didn't get up and had that half an hour, 15 minutes for ourselves before the whole house wakes up and the whole, you know, morning starts up with school and all sorts of things. You make a choice. Enjoy the stillness and I'm enjoying that right now. And the house is sleeping and I'm outside. Feet barefoot to the ground. Enjoying my morning coffee while it's quiet time. I do this every single morning if it's absolutely possible. Weather permitted. Because I love it and I fill up my soul. For me. And if I'm full, I can give. If I'm calm and the children come chaotic from the house, from the school, I can calm them down because my vibration and my energy is already calm. And when they see me calm, how do they react? They calm down. When they were little and they had a temper tantrums and I was calm. Of course, there was times when they would have run across the road and you're just like as a parent freaking out that something doesn't happen to them. Those moments, of course, you run. The same as when you go to the hospital. If the doctors and nurses are panicking and um, you see the fear inside of the faces, do you feel calm as a patient? You don't. When I was nurse and working with the babies, well, you need to be calm. They're wanting to see reassurance from you. They want to feel safe and secure. In equal times, you can say from vulnerable point, I'm tired today. I feel overwhelmed, I feel triggered. I need help. This is where assertiveness and vulnerability comes in. Well, we still have good boundaries. On all of these, I teach in my programs, the Radio and You programs, and there is a heart activation bundle. I want you to come home to yourself. I want you to transform, evolve and embody and be absolutely amazing person, loving your light and loving your shadows, loving it and understanding it and use it. Use it in a way that you know that your strengths and maybe resilience help you to be where you are today. And I'm sending you that energy, energy of love and light. 